Hello dear students welcome to the class on hormonal contraceptives so in this class you will going to learn about the various aspects about the hormonal contraceptives coming to the specific learning objectives for today's class so that at the end of this session you should be able to classify the hormonal contraceptives should be able to describe the mechanism of action uses adverse effects of combined oral contraceptives you should be able to describe the mechanism uses and adverse effects of progestin only pill should be able to describe the mechanism uses and adverse effects of emergency pills and a brief you should be able to describe the importance of implants and next you should be able to explain the various adverse effects with respect to the hormonal contraceptives and the uses of hormonal contraceptives so next moving on to the classification of hormonal contraceptives they can be classified into combined oral contraceptives progestin only pill emergency pill and implants so by the word it itself it suggests that combined oral contraceptive means it will be made up of combination of estrogen plus progesterone so what do you think of progestin only pill it is made up of only the progesterone so in case of emergency pills you have got uh, various varieties of drugs starting from the progesterone to oral contraceptive pills you have got mefepristone you have got ulipristol you have got even the intrauterine devices so under implants you have got parenteral drugs which are administered through in the form of intramuscular implants as well as the subcutaneous implants so coming to the combined oral contraceptive pills they are made up of two components that is estrogen and progesterone they are given in a fixed dose combination so the most common so the most common estrogen is ethinyl estradiol and the most common progesterone is levonorgestrel so based on the concentration or the amount of estrogen it can be oral contrac combined oral contraceptive it can be classified into estrogen with standard dose which is having 50 micrograms estrogen which is having low dose estrogen that is 30 to 35 micrograms and very low dose estrogen with 20 micrograms so coming to the types of combined oral contraceptive pills we have got three types one is the monophasic second is biphasic and third is triphasic first we'll see what is monophasic in monophasic the both the estrogen as well as progesterone dose will be same so the progesterone as well as the estrogen dose will be same for the whole 21 days of the hormonal contraception so basically where you want hormonal contraceptives basically to prevent the pregnancy so next we'll move on to the next uh, type that is biphasic here the estrogen dose remains same for all 21 days but the dose of progestin will vary during the first 10 days you will be administering one dose and during the second half that is from 11 to 21 days you will be administering the another dose so that's why they are called as biphasic so you are giving the two different doses of progesterone during this 21 days so next you have a 
triphasic again in triphasic the estrogen dose will remain same whereas the progesterone dose will differ for three different phases so low dose will be given during the first phase starting from day 1 to day 6 the moderate dose will be administered during the second phase from 7 to 11th day and the high doses of progesterone will be given during the third phase starting from the day 12 till 21st day is it clear monophasic means the same dose will be given for 21 days biphasic means the progesterone dose will be different on two different periods whereas triphasic means progesterone dose will be different during three phases in this whole 21 days so coming to the mechanism of action of uh, combined oral contraceptive pill so you know that there will be pituitary air this is pituitary so pituitary is responsible for accretion of LH and FSH through the GnRH which will be released from hypothalamus these GnRH will go into stimulate the pituitary thereby pituitary will be releasing the LH and the FSH these and LH and FSH they brings about the LS search once they stimulate the ovary there will be production of estrogen and progesterone which brings about pre-ovulatory LH search which will help in for helps in the ovulation process so when you give a combined oral contraceptive pills the estrogen as well as the progesterone component in the combined oral contraceptive pills they inhibit the feedback so feed they brings about feedback inhibition of the pituitary they are going to inhibit the pituitary activity thereby there will be inhibition of LH and FSH release so thereby ultimately they will going to abolish the LH surge which was required for ovulation thereby it will inhibit the ovulation this is the mechanism of the combined oral contraceptive pill so the main mechanism of or combined oral contraceptive pill is to inhibit the ovulation inhibit the ovulation by abolishing the LH surge how abolition of LH surge occurs by feedback inhibition of the pituitary so thereby there won't be any release of LH as well as the FSH so this is the mechanism what I explained when you give combined oral contraceptive pill there will be feedback inhibition of pituitary which brings about abolition of the LH surge thereby ultimately there will be inhibition of the ovulation so next you have other two mechanism where some of the drugs like example mainly the progesterone will going to increase the thickness of the cervical mucosa thereby it prevents the sperm penetration or migration and also the progesterone can inhibit the secretion from the fallopian tube and also it can it will inhibit the implantation due to the creation of unfavorable endometrium so the oral combined oral contraceptive pills produces hormonal contraception by inhibition of the ovulation whereas many pills which contains the progesterones they act by inhibiting the sperm penetration the emergency contraceptives will act by inhibiting the implantation so coming to the next uh, slide so when to start combined oral contraceptive pills so normally you know that the what is the length of the normal menstrual cycle it is 28 day cycle so combined oral contraceptive pill has to be administered from day 1 of the menstrual cycle till day 21 so when you give the oral contraceptive pills on day 1 again you will be going to give on day 2 day 3 day 4 day 5 day 6 like that you will be going to give this oral combined oral contraceptive pills till day 21 so after this from day 22 to 28 you will that is for seven days you will be withdrawing the oral combined oral contraceptive pills in that place you will be giving only the iron tablet 
so basically you will be administering combined oral contraceptive pills for only 21 days so what is the reason for giving the combined oral contraceptive pills only for 21 days so you, you start with day 1 and you continue till day 21 so oral contraceptive pills will be given from 22 to 28 will not be giving combined oral contraceptive pills in that place you only you will be giving only the iron tablets why you will not be giving the oral contraceptive pills which contains estrogen and progesterone so mainly you will be withdrawing so withdrawing the hormones so once you withdraw the hormones it will lead to it will slough off the endometrial cells thereby leading to the menstruation so that is the reason why you are going to give the oral contraceptive pills only for 21 days and the rest 7 days you will be withdrawing the hormone so that the endometrial which is formed can slough, slough off which can be released through vagina leading to the menstruation so there is one more doubt for the curiosity how long it will take to regain the ovulation process once you stop the oral contraceptive pills so it takes around three months to regain the normal ovulation remember it takes around three months so what are the uses of combined oral contraceptive pills the uses being they can be used in case of newly married couples as well as in case of molar pregnancies sorry for the spelling mistake it is molar pregnancy so after evacuation of the molar thing so next moving on to the progesterone only pills it is also called as mini pills which contains low dose of progesterone without any estrogenic component so when compared to the combined oral contraceptive pills it is less effective as a hormonal contraceptive when compared to the combined oral contraceptive pills so where do you prefer uh, the progesterone only pills why do you want to prefer they are preferred only in case of smokers in women aged more than 35 years and those women who are with a risk of thromboembolism you know that estrogen will increase the risk of thromboembolism so in such case the estrogen component will be contra indicated in some of the women so in such cases you can go for progesterone only pills so coming to the choice of progesterone only pills it can be given in case of lactating women it can be given in case of sickle cell anemia it is preferred uh, or a choice of hormonal contraceptive in case of a person with seizure and convulsive disorders if you use estrogen here again estrogen will going to precipitate the epilepsy that's why you are not using the estrogen so you will be preferring only the progesterone component so how it work progesterone so it will be given in a low dose it is given daily the mechanism is it is going to thicken the cervical mucosa thereby preventing the sperm migration as well as the implantation process so coming to the next uh, contraceptive type that is emergency contraceptives it is also called as post coital or morning after pills so the examples are levonorgestrel combined oral contraceptive pills ephipristone ulipristol and intrauterine devices so these numbers are, tells about the uh, 
duration within which you should give levonorgestrel or these drugs after the unprotected sexual intercourse which is most commonly occurs during uh, rape or during failure of condoms so uh, in such cases you will going to give levonorgestrel within 72 hours of the unprotected sexual intercourse OCP pills within 72 hours mefipristone mefipristone is a progesterone antagonist antiprogestin is given within 72 hours ulipristol it should be given within 120 hours so ulipristol is a what is ulipristol ulipristol is a sprm that is selective progesterone receptor modulator you can use iud intrauterine devices within 5 days so the dose of levonorgestrel will be 1.5 mg orally single dose combined oral contraceptive pills two tablets should be taken immediately followed by within 12 hours of the first uh, two drugs you should take another two drugs coming to the mefipristone a 600 mg should be administered orally it is also a single dose and ulipristol the dose is 30 milligrams again it is given orally and it is also a single dose and you try and try it is within five days so next coming to the one more type that is parenteral contraceptives here you will be using only the parenteral forms in condition where estrogen component is contraindicated so in such case you will be giving the implants through intramuscular route and through subcutaneous route so you have intramuscular implants you have dmpa that is deport medroxy progesterone acetate as well as nor ethindrone enanthate under subcutaneous implants you have nor plant and capronover which are nothing but the derivatives made up of levo norgestrel nor plant will stay in the body till five years so the most common side effect which is encountered with respect to the parenteral uh, contraceptives or it can cause irregular bleeding the most problematic uh, thing with respect to the prolonged use of parenteral contraceptive is the it causes infertility so infertility can be permanent also so coming to the adverse effects of the hormonal contraceptives it can cause nausea it can cause Nostalgia, pain in the pain in the breast, it can cause breakthrough bleeding, it can lead to edema due to the retention of water and sodium, it can worsen the pre-existing migraine, it can lead to the failure of withdrawal bleeding. It in some of the individuals which are having progesterone with uh, androgenic activity can lead to gain in the weight, and also progesterone component with androgenic activity can cause acne as well as the hirsutism apart from this you should also very important thing you should note down is they will increase the risk of venous thromboembolism myocardial infarction stroke this has been mainly due to the estrogenic component because estrogen will increase the clotting factors like factor 7 8 9 10 and also it will going to reduce the anti clotting factor like anti thrombin so venous thromboembolism risk is mainly due to the estrogen that's why in such cases you will not be preferring the estrogenic component uh, and you will be going only for the progesterone containing contraceptives next these hormonal contraceptives can cause cholestatic jandice gallbladder disease it can cause gallbladder stones and it can cause also the hepatic adeno mass remember the the gallbladder carcinoma is not directly uh, related with the hormonal contraceptive pills uh, because of the formation of the gallbladder stone these stones which are formed in gallbladder can increase the risk for gallbladder carcinoma so next oral contraceptive pills can increase the risk of breast carcinoma as well as cervical carcinoma and uh, at the same time it will reduce the risk of endometrial as well as the 
over in carcinoma the risk of breast cancer and cervical cancer is mainly due to the estrogenic component whereas reduction in the endometrial carcinoma and uh, ovarian carcinoma is mainly attributed to the progesterone component so coming to the other uh, adverse effects as i said breakthrough bleeding is more commonly seen in in case of progesterone only pills it is reduced in case of biphasic as well as the triphasic pills as i said weight gain is more commonly seen with progesterone with androgenic activity it is less seen with the disogesterol as well as the norgestimate and acne and hirsutism is mainly due to the progesterone which are having androgenic activity coming to the summary as you know hormonal contraceptives can be classified into combined oral contraceptive progestin only pill emergency pill and implants under combined oral contraceptives we have learned that it contains estrogen as well as the progesterone so based on the estrogen component estrogen dose you can classify into standard low dose very low dose which contains 50 micrograms low dose contains 30 to 35 and uh, very low dose contains 20 micrograms so based on the other uh, phases you can classify into monophasic biphasic triphasic in monophasic the estrogen as well as the progesterone component will be same for all the 21 days whereas in case of biphasic estrogen component will remain same whereas the progesterone component will differ during the first 10 days the dose will be different and next from 11 to 21 days the dose will be different in triphasic estrogen remains same again whereas progesterone in the first phase you will be giving the low dose from starting from 1 to day 6 and there will be moderate dose that is second phase from 7 to 11th day and there will be high dose of progesterone from 12th to 21st day so although what is the mechanism of action of oral contraceptive pills mainly it inhibits the ovulation how it inhibits the ovulation by inhibiting the lh surge lh surge is it clear mainly it is used what is the use of combined oral contraceptive pills in case of newly married women as well as after evacuation of the molar pregnancy so coming to the progesterone only pills progesterone only pills it contains only the low dose of progesterones so it is also called as mini pill where it is indicated mainly in case of where estrogen or contra indicated and also in smokers women more than 35 years who are having epilepsy or seizure and also in case of sickle cell anemia etc also you can be used during lactation lactation so this mechanism what is the mechanism of action of progesterone only pills so mechanism of action will be it will going to increase the cervical mucosa thickness and thereby prevent the sperm penetration coming to the emergency pills they are also called as post coital pills or morning after pills mainly it is used for used for unprotected sexual intercourse which usually occurs during rape or due to the failure of the condom so in such case you can use emergency pills like levonorgestrel combined oral contraceptives you have mefepristone uliprostol and intrauterine devices so mainly it has these drugs are given within 72 hours but uliprostol you remember it can be given within 150 hours so under implants parenteral implants these are the parenteral implants you have 
intramuscular as well as the subcutaneous implants you have nor plant which is given till 5 years so what are the adverse effects it can cause nausea it can cause mastalgia it can lead to worsening of the migraine it can increase the risk of thromboembolism it can increase the risk of mi it can increase the risk of stroke all this three component is mainly due to the estrogenic component so it can also increase the risk of acne it can also increase the risk of hirsutism and also it increase the risk of uh, cancers like breast and uh, cervix decreases the risk of carcinomas like endometrium and ovarian so risk of breast carcinoma is mainly due to the estrogenic component uh, reduction in the endometrial endometrial carcinoma as well as ovarian carcinoma is mainly due to the progesterone so how does this impl sorry for uh, i didn't tell about the implantation mechanism sorry uh, emergency contraceptive mechanism the emergency contraceptive mechanism is they're going to prevent the implantation they're going to prevent the implantation process so basically where are their use basically to prevent the prevent the pregnancy i hope you'll be able to describe the important features of oral contraceptives in brief after going through this lecture session thank you